Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me. My name is Paula, also known as The Snail Gum on social media. And I have an Etsy shop, Eva Faith, where I mostly sell hand dyed linen for cross stitching. This is my July vlog. It's going to be a little different again this month. At the end of June, my husband came home from work with COVID and very generously gave it to all of us. So I wasn't able to record to camera and I didn't show my crafting. So today I'm going to share June and July's crafting and there's very little vlog because I didn't go anywhere for the first half of the month for obvious reasons. But there are some photos of my garden and a day trip or two. So I will insert my July vlog and then come back and share my projects.
Firstly, I will just apologise for the quality of my voice and extra editing where I have to edit coughs out because talking makes me cough. So having said that, let's see what I've been up to. I have an old project here. A long while ago, I made these Rolex. And they are merino and tussa silk that I have blended on my blending board. Because it's, I think during July, it's Tour de Fleece. And I've never taken part, and I didn't this time either, but a friend of mine taking part and we were talking about what she was spinning and it inspired me to get this out again. Now this is a project that I started a very long while ago as I said. It's in this little project bag I made. The little beaded sheep. It was mostly my own design. And I am spinning this on a drop spindle that lives up to its name. I keep dropping it and it is resin with some pretty flowers in the top. And I've almost finished the first half of the spin. As you can see, I'm very out of practice. It's a bit thick and thin. But hopefully it'll even out when I ply it with the second half of the Rolex. This is an ongoing project that's going to be taking me quite a while. At the beginning of June, I started a knitting project, which was the Curious Handmade Miss May Mystery Knit Along. I will insert a photograph of it and Helen Stewart released this part in weekly parts. And I love all of Helen's designs. So I was quite happy to do one of her mysteries again. And I was a little bit behind, as is normal for me, but being unwell, gave me plenty of knitting time and I was able to catch up and actually finish on time. And this is the first part. And the first colourway is Mr Blue Skies by Craft House Magic. And the second part is Glacial by Hedgerow Yarns. And this one, I don't know if it's going to show. It's got Stellina in it. So it has a little bit of a sparkle. I don't think it's showing. And as the clues progressed, we went into She's Like the Wind, which also has some Stellina in it. Again by Craft House Magic. And Mint Imperial by Stranded Dye Works. And then there was a repeat of the colours. Now being a mystery, it's long. And we also knew it was lace. I kind of had in my mind what it was going to look like. And I was imagining it to be a lace border at the end. And I believe the border was more of a repeat of this. But I took another border off one of Helen's previous shawls to put on to the end of mine because I do like a lot of lace. And I very much like sort of the pico edging scallops. 
And so it, it is very large, as you can see. I will insert some photographs of the finished item so you can see it all in one go. Obviously I'm back into knitting again because I then promptly cast on a new project. This is a pattern that I've had for a while. I just had always planned it would be one of my next cast ons. Rebel Rebel by Truly Myrtle, Libby Johnson. And I was kind of put off by knowing what size to choose. And so my friend Nicola of Bumble Stitches very kindly helped me out with the sizing. And this I am knitting in. Eden Cottage Yarns Polwa and the colourway is Chroma Pier which immediately made me want to buy it. I love the colour but the name as well really attracted me because Chroma is on the North Norfolk coast which is one of my favourite places since I am from around that area. Now, I haven't knit with Polworth before. It has a slightly crisp feel to it, and it is supposed to soften up when you wash it. I hope it does, because I'm a bit of a baby like that. <laughs> I'm keeping my project in one of my Eva Faith project bags that I made quite a while ago. And this one I did make for knitting, but I can also use it for my cross stitching. And I am knitting it on three millimeter needles. And alternating two yarns because one of them is slightly, has slightly darker parts in it. Now, in this design, you start at the top with a provisional cast on, and then you work down the back to the bottom of the armholes. And the colouring is showing up slightly darker than it actually is. It's a little bit more subtle, as you saw on the, the, the ball. And then when you have done that, you pick up the stitches at the top again and you start knitting down the front. So now this is just knit backwards and forth, alternating two skeins for most of the way down until you get to some little pockets. Which will be interesting because I don't think I've ever knitted pockets before. So that will take me a while. And those are my only woolly projects. So now we can move on to cross stitching. Each month I am stitching the Mini Bouquet by Jeanette Douglas. And they are free designs that she's very generously publishing. And this is the June. Time. I am changing the colours as I'm stitching from stash and they are all Anchor and DMC that I have in my stash. Each one is on 32 count linen that I have hand dyed and this one is on birch. And I will be making them up into little lavender sachets. This one is the June bouquet. 
again on the 32 count birch. And I really like the colours of these. I took these ones to be rose hips and so I took the colours of the roses in my garden which are pink and peach as inspiration and I have some cool flowers in my garden and so these ones were meant to be crosses I don't know if you can see I've done Algerian eyelets for those because I quite liked them looking a little bit spiky this one is the July quite patriotic colours so I decided to stick to that and this is 32 count I think this was a light chestnut and I haven't put the crosses in the centre of these because I'm going to put little white beads on them and some white beads around where there were individual crosses. My main project through July was, is still, because it's not finished, Winter Rose Manor. And I had put this away for quite a while, getting distracted by other things. But I'm hoping that by the end of August I will have finished this, as long as there are no more distractions. Okay, this is a little awkward because it's on a table stand. As you can see, I have mostly done the house. I can't make up my mind on the colour of the house. And I have just got this part of the border, oops, right over there, <laughs> to finish the berries. I will probably insert some photographs because the colours just aren't showing very well on this. That might be a little bit better, actually, that way around. I've changed the colours of the cardinals and all my reds and pinks I have changed and I will input in the description box my colour changes. I wanted it to look more like the reds on the photograph and my colours were more rusty, less red. been very good and not bought very many items but I do have three new charts. This one is Brenda Gervais One for the Crow. I like all of Brenda Gervais designs and my dad, I can remember him saying this when I was younger. And I got this on a D-Dash group. So this is a second-hand chart, but it is in excellent condition. You wouldn't know it was second-hand. My next two charts are unicorns. Not literally, but you know, a unicorn chart. And if somebody doesn't know, it's a chart that you really want to stitch, but you can't get hold of for some reason or another. And on a group I belong to, there was a post about showing a photograph of your unicorn chart and I posted this one. Now, I knew this was available from Brenda Chavez's website, 
but she doesn't actually post overseas. And a lady very kindly said, I will send that to you. I was overwhelmed by her generosity and kindness. And she also sent me this sweet little card, which I put in the back. And so we did a little swap and I'm going to stitch this so that I can put some of the buttons that are from my grandmother's button tin. So, and it's a little needle book when you finish it. So I'm looking forward to stitching that one. Brenda Gervais has actually coffee dyed her buttons but I'm not going to do that because I want to keep the buttons as they are, though I do like this vintage look. And my other unicorn chart is something I have had my eye on for a while but could not find because I don't believe it's printed anymore. And this is the Japanese Garden by Chatelaine. And anybody who actually knows me will know it's no surprise that I want to stitch the Japanese Garden. And this Torrey Gate that is in the sea, my husband and I have actually stood on the pier in front of that. And so as soon as I saw that, I knew I wanted to stitch it. And I love the cranes as well. It's actually a beautiful design with speciality stitches and silk threads. So I haven't kitted this one up yet. I'm going to wait until I'm ready to stitch it, but I have got so many other things I need to stitch first. I'm just very happy to have finally found it. I actually found this on 123 Stitch in America, and it was just a photo on Pinterest that I followed that alerted me to the fact that they had a copy. So I'm really pleased with that. As soon as I saw it, I said to my husband, that's my birthday present, because it was my birthday in June. <laughs> and that there are quite a lot of threads and beads. So this is going to be perhaps another birthday present to actually um, get it up. <laughs> I am going to be going up to Norfolk to see my parents soon. I will be leaving my Etsy shop open but there will be a week's delay if you want to order anything. Um, I will be posting up until the 5th of August as normal, which is usually next day or next working day. And from then onwards, it will be a week's delay, but you'll still be able to order items. And hopefully, because I'm going to Norfolk, I'll have a little bit more of a vlog next month. Thank you for watching. I hope I haven't sounded too croaky for you. And happy stitching. Till next time. Bye.